Listen, base is loaded, bottom of the ninth. And I'm going to take my time on this video. And I just want to say that to everybody, if you see people and they're walking around with flags, these people are nationalists and they are extremists. And you need to stay far away from them. Now, in this game, I'm going to talk about the aftermath of Colombia and Uruguay. And I just want to say that I believe that it was uncalled for what happened in the stands and Colombia won the game. And I felt like the majority of South America, Central America, if anybody that has a team with a large melanated group of people win a game and they beat a team that is predominantly all white, I believe that it's going to be problems. And I feel that on this topic, I'm going to be 100% honest. I feel like the people from Colombia were not treated properly. And outside of America, colorism is a thing. But the cool thing about the Colombian soccer team, and I was blessed to actually, you know, see them. They came to Phoenix and I was surprised because, like I said, I've never been to Colombia, never did my research, never did my research, let it breathe. But I was surprised the majority of the Colombian soccer team looked like me. I was like, wow, that's hey man, times are changing. What a time to be alive. Um, and I, I'm happy that they have, you know, skills to play and provide for themselves. Because in a lot of these countries, if you melanated, man, the police, which are pretty much the military, they're just rolling around you, shooting at you and pointing guns to your nose. Let it breathe. Now, this is the aftermath of the game. And Uruguay lost. So why are the players of Uruguay in the stands? Now, a lot of people are trying to make the narrative. He was trying to protect his family. First of all, if you are a player, why is your family in the stands with the regular general population? This is my first time doing a soccer video. Um, hopefully it's my last time doing a soccer video because at the end of the day, a lot of these soccer players, they're like celebrities. They're just high priced slaves. I mean, there's nothing special about being a celebrity. And a lot of these people, they idolize these players. They, they idolize people like Messi. They idolize people like Ronaldo. But to the people that own these teams, they could, they, they could care less about Ronaldo. They could care less about his Bugattis. People that are fanatics, they think the players are everything. But in reality, these players are nothing more than high priced slaves and they could get traded and they could get bought out and they could get cut at any time. To the owners, these players are nobodies. To the fanatics, these players are lowercase gods. And I don't watch soccer. I'm gonna put that out there. And this is a player from Uruguay and he's in the stands and he got punched in the face. And you know, he did some damage too, he threw some blows. But my main thing is, why are you in the stands with fanatics and you're a player? Now, look at this guy right here. And this is what I want to talk about, you know, being a nationalist. A lot of people, they walk around and they put a flag around their neck. Like, is it really that serious? And, you know, like I said, I didn't grow up in South America or Central America. But I just feel like people who walk around and carry a flag or, you know, people that, you know, do things like this, they're just nationalists and extreme and they're walking around like my country is better than yours. These are very disrespectful people. You see it all the time, even in America, um, when you see them at the Dominican parade, the Puerto Rican parade, and just walking around holding up flags. Listen, nobody has time for that. You feel me? You are not a flag. Everybody put an F. Up. Everybody put an F in a chat for flag. Live your life as an individual. Don't walk it around wrapped up in a flag like you represent the country. No, you don't represent the country. All over the world, you have rich people. You have people who favor European and they might get a couple of dollars. Then you have melanated people. They're supposed to be going through the struggle. All around the world is the same ish, different toilet. You do not represent a flag. You, I even saw this in the South, um, especially around campaign time. People run around holding up a Confederate flag. They're holding up an American flag, make America great again. These people are dangerous and you need to watch out for them. These people are what you call nationalists. And this is what happened in the stand. Look at this man's face. He's in a stand and he's fighting past the age of 65. Everybody put 65 in the chat. He's fighting at 65, holding on to a flag. This is in his heart. He has hatred in his heart. A lot of people are walking around holding up a flag. They're pretty much saying, my country is better than yours. These people are walking around with hatred in their heart.
Now, this is a player, once again, um, a lot of people are trying to make him out to be a hero, but he's not a hero because if, you're the, if you provide for your family and you're making money for your family, all, all it takes is one punch. Everybody put one P for one punch. Now, if you got to fight, definitely fight, but you got to understand one punch. You could, you, you could lose your life off of one punch. You know, they had, a, I think it got an anime called One Punch Man, but literally this man ran into the One Punch Man for Columbia. This dude reach was phenomenal. This dude literally connected two miles away. This was unbelievable. But this right here is an embarrassment to Uruguay. And it's also an embarrassment to, uh, well, I, like, I, it's not a, an embarrassment to Colombia. I felt that people from Colombia, they were, um, they were throwing water at them. And I believe that this is because people from Colombia, they, are viewed as less than people from Uruguay. And I don't feel like it's right. I felt people from Colombia did the right thing. And before I finish this video, I'm gonna pull out the per I'm gonna point out the person in 4K that started the whole fight. And this man attacked somebody from Colombia. And I mean, listen, if somebody attack, of course, the only thing to do is defend yourself. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, the people from Colombia. No, I think they're only saying that because they're not as light as people from Uruguay. And I think that's not right. And at the end of the day, I just want to say that I'm not from Colombia. So I have no reason to side with Colombia. But in this case, I feel the people from Colombia, they did the right thing. Don't let these people that look European just come throw war on you, bully you, run up to the stands and attack you. Because that's what happened. Now, this is a guy right here in 4K. He's, he threw the first punch. He was a party starter. Everybody put PS for party starter. He threw the first punch. He came and attacked somebody from Colombia. He's in 4K. If you want to send this to the authorities, if you want to send this to the police, this was a man that threw the first punch. And he attacked somebody from Colombia. So he couldn't be Colombian because why would a person from Colombia attack somebody with a Colombian jersey? This was the man that started everything. Yes, if you zoom in, the guy with the white hat, he started everything. So at the end of the day, yes, his team lost. I understand. But you guys have to understand, stop being fanatics. Like, there's so many people that are fanatics. This is why I call my movement FLS. When people tell me, Mr. Keep It Simple, I'm a fan of your channel, I stop them. You're not a fan. You're a frontline soldier. We all fight the same fight. I don't have fans. I have frontline soldiers. We all fight the same battle. I don't do fanatics. This man right here threw the first punch at a Colombian man, and he connected four or five times. This man was accurate. Everybody put an A for accurate. He was accurate with his punches. He was connecting. And this is what happened. And this is the aftermath. Now, this guy right here is probably going to go down as a hero for Colombia. The president is probably going to invite him for lunch. The president is probably going to invite him for dinner, brunch, something. But this guy right here is a hero. Because when a player from Uruguay ran up in the stands, he, he was attacking. This guy was actually retreating. So at the end of the day, this man had the arms of Dow Zim off a street fighter. And he threw a long punch from two miles away. I don't know how he connected, but he connected. And shout out to this guy right here because, once again, he doesn't look European. He doesn't look white. And look how he's being treated. He has to retreat. He's being pushed around. And it's not fair. He paid his ticket. You got to understand, a lot of these tickets for these events are out of control. They're expensive. And um, look, look, look at the people from Uruguay. Look how they're behaving. They're starting to the fight. And they're fighting against people for Colombia, and they pretty much got rumble. That's all I have to say. One day I'll probably post to Uruguay, so this video is, you know, it's not directed. I'm not, you know, picking sides, but I'm just saying a lot of people, you know, that look European, look how they be treating people and look how they, you know, behave. You know, after a loss, like it's not that serious. But once again, Colombia, Uruguay, you guys all speak the same language. Um, it's time to get along and um, understand that you shouldn't live your life through a flag. They brainwash people that you are a flag, you stand for a flag, you do everything for the flag, you sing a national anthem. Listen, be an individual. Let it breathe.